and welcome to Off The Fence, brought to you in association with Bet365 as always. And as always, I am joined by Barry Geraghty and Tony Keenan to look back at the last seven days of jump racing and also to look forward. And we have got plenty to get stuck into this week. I feel like I'm saying that all the time at the moment, but the action is coming thick and fast at the moment. Uh, it's terribly exciting. We're only four weeks away from the Cheltenham Festival. We've got loads to get through and we're going to start by taking a look back at what happened where on the race course over the last seven days. And of course, it was a brilliant weekend of action, Saturday and Sunday. And we're going to start with Goshen at Wincanton for the Moore team. Um, Barry Geraghty, he is now 9-2 to two with Bet365 for the champion hurdle, having roared back to life. Um, visually, it was a very impressive performance. What did you make of it? What do you make of the form? And do you now see him as a real champion hurdle contender? I do. Um, I thought it was a great run, a brilliant win. I think conditions were perfect for him. Um, heavy ground. He loves hard work. Um, and it was interesting, even as they were down the back, you could see Jamie give him a squeeze. So albeit he is a keen horse, he's actually at the back of it, he's more of a stayer. And it was a real test of stamina. Uh, song for someone, he seemed to struggle um, on the ground down the back straight. But then he got into the race a little bit before the turn in. But there's only one horse going from the last of the line. And Goshen, it was a really, really big performance. Huge performance. And I guess the question is now, he's been a horse who I know we've had excuses for him along the way uh, when he has flopped on the race course. But he's got to back up. A huge performance again with another huge performance now in the champion hurdle and I guess no one can answer that question at this point but the way in which he ran through the line you'd hope that it, it looked and it felt like they had him right back to form right back to his physical very best uh, you can pick holes in the form for various reasons but just physically the way he went through the line is what I loved he was still seemingly tanking yeah, no, it was. He looked as if he was back to his best. Um, I think the big part for me is the ground. I think he wants it soft to be at his best in Cheltenham. The champion hurdle course ran on the old course. It's a sharp track. And for me, his running last year on the triumph hurdle on a stay in track, that suited him. I just think on, so he needs soft ground for me on the old course in Cheltenham. And I just he needs to settle as well because albeit he's a real good stayer and he probably hasn't got the high cruising speed. If he's running with the choke out, He's doing too much. So I think in an ideal world, if Jamie could get him relaxed behind the pace and just ride a nice even pace all the way, you'll see him come home. But I think for him to be in touch and travelling easy to be able to kick off the turn in, I think he wants it soft. Yeah, I would concur with that. I think there's still a few question marks going to Cheltenham with him. Just in terms of what you've touched upon, Gary, um, Barry, just Tony, what did you make of his performance? And do you think his price is roughly right for the champion hurdle currently? Or do you think people have got a bit overexcited with the fact that he's back with a bang, with a big distance win, hard on the bridle? Yeah, you, you can definitely grab the race, uh, possibly falling apart a little bit. Song for someone was in trouble a long way out. Um, Donald McKean's horse didn't seem to run to the form of, of Hedek, but horse won so easily, won so far... You, it's hard to say he's not back to his best I suppose the thing that I took away from it was that he he proved far more amenable to restraint um I know they didn't bury him like they did in the in the international hurdle but I got the sense reading the comments of the trainer uh, pre-race that they were going to go up, really go on with him and force a good pace no he just sat off it and, and he for his standards he was pretty relaxed um which is going to be interesting in the champion hurdle itself. We know there's going to be a lot of pace in that race. You have, you have him possibly not so sleepy, Aspire Tower, Silver Streak. Now, I'd be a big believer in looking at the pace of races after the run in terms of analysing them, what happened, did they go too hard, did they go slow and quick and did they go an even pace? Because while we're looking at this and we're saying, well, there's four potential front runners, connections and jockeys look at that too. Um, and some of them may say, well, we are not getting into a, a dog fight from after a hurdle or two um, and you know have a race run um, a half a mile to go. So they will look at that, they will think of that. Henry de Bromhead has two key horses there as well. Honeysuckle likes to be ridden quite forward as well. So that'll be interesting. And of course the pace can stick as well, but he's definitely he's a brilliant addition to it. Uh, without wish to slag Epitant, it just looks a much more interesting race than the one, the one that she looked like she would be destined to be odds on for going into Christmas. It's so interesting now. Um, and I would have been someone who was given Aspire Tower a life in this race, and uh, as it's been pointed out, like 
coaching at him well covered. I know there are different circumstances as per how it was in himself um, in the triumph last year. So no, it, it sets up, he's added a, a really good um, other layer to it. And as to his price, yeah, I, I, I definitely didn't think it, it was a, it was a terrible um, you know, a, adjustment in price. Um, thought maybe the one with Champ, which we'll come to, was maybe a little bit more um, oversellish, shall we say. Okay, well, like you say, we will come to that in due course. Viewers, what do you think? Do you think Goshen can win a champion hurdle? Get off the fence. Tell us what you think. Tell us what you make of his price, his performance at the weekend, etc., etc. Let's stick with the weekend, but head over to Ascot and focus in on the Ascot chase, where, of course, surname was coming back with those cheap pieces on for the first time. Dashiell Drasher was in there. Turned out to be the winner of the race, beating Master Tommy Tucker with surname pulled up. Tony, a uh, few disappointments in there. Surname, obviously, the crucial one, put up no show at all and was pulled up pretty sharpish. What was your overriding view of that race as a whole? And is Dashiell Drasher a horse to keep on side with or has he won an Ascot chase that's fallen apart somewhat? Um, I, th I think it was quite similar to the, t the Clarence House that was run at the same track back in January in terms of the, the pace they went. Again, the sectional tools on the Atheris website are very good for this. I think that the finishing speed of 90% in that race on Saturday, which is, means they've gone hard early and, and then they're, they're slowing up markedly late. Um, and Dash and Drasher had set a good pace at Ascot at the time before in the handicap, but nothing not compared to this. They weren't walking, um, though really were walking a little bit late here. I suppose Serenium is the one you're drawn to, to talk about. Um, and I... He capitulated really quite easily. He seemed to get a, a reasonably, you know, comfortable time in front earlier when Dashiell Dasher hadn't um, Dashiell Dasher Dashiell Dasher. Sorry, that's a tongue twister there. He, he his jumping air early wasn't you know wasn't wonderful and wasn't letting him lay up. But the, the jockey then put him into the race and seeing him checked out quite rapidly. Um, I would come back to Nicky Henderson's point about this race that Serenium and Altior had at Ascot. I know he's been a bit maligned for that about how he's campaigned Altior since, but he is right about that, isn't he? Like that, that, that race has bottomed Serenium. Oh, um, it, it may well have bottomed Altior. We, we, we will find out. Like Serenium has run one good race out of five since then, and was that even a good run? Like the, the, the Charlie Hall, the the potted round, and um, he, he just sort of kind of quickened away from them good horse you would expect him to do that and some probably lowly rated enough ones in behind them behind vindication so yeah I, I think Nicky Henderson is probably right about that and Paul Nichols who is very good at getting horses back like this is an absolute um, huge challenge to, to manage to get Sierra back to Enton Lake is best and we will we, we'll find out with Altior soon enough but I, I'd be quite now you're looking at what it's done to Sierra who would have been the younger horse um, I wouldn't be too positive on Altior coming back from it no, I completely agree. And you keep coming back to the race. We loved it at the time, but in hindsight, uh, has it completely bottomed them is a very uh, good question. Barry, we should focus on the winner, Dash or Drasher. I'm interested to know what it's like when you're riding a horse like that who hits the front. And then, I mean, visually, it looks like he's basically grinding to a halt. And at the time, I was like, Jesus, the poor thing is absolutely knackered. But actually, on reflection, when Master Tommy Tucker comes to him again after the last... He actually had, had, I was going to say, plenty more in the tank. I'm not sure about that, but there was still some juice left in the tank. What did you make of the performance? Well, that was a great performance. He still has another bit to go to, to get to the top level, but he's improved all season. His win the last day ties in with Benny's King. The Benny's King form is there again. I thought Masty Tommy Tucker on ratings ran more or less to his rating. He's a 10-year-old, so you're not expecting much improvement. And I thought he settled really well and, and jumped really well for Darrell. So he, he had every chance to run well. But I thought the winner, the mistake at the last was going to cost him, but he picked up again, which was the sign that he had a bit more in the tank. Um, no, He's a horse on the up, but as I say, he's another bit to go to, to catch the top level. But he's definitely, he's going the right way. He is indeed going the right way. And I'm with Tony and on the basis that surname, big question marks now for me with him. Barry, let's stick with you. Quick word on the Reynolds Town with Remastered winning that. Uh, looked a proper, proper stare on the day. Terrific ride, actually. And I think a horse to keep on side with, but my concern would be if they go to Cheltenham with him. He is currently 16 to 1 for the National Hunt Chase with Betsy 365. Uh, I would be a little bit worried that he's got a bit of a gap to find on some of the main protagonists in that race. What's your view of that? I would have thought the same. He's a little bit defined, but he is the right type. He jumps brilliantly, stays really well. It probably wasn't the strongest new one of the race, but um, he is the horse you would take out of it. And he'd be competitive in the four mile. Um, but to say he'd win it, I think it'd have to cut up for him to win it. 
Okay, I, yeah, I think I agree with that. And now we're moving on to the horse who is probably the big talking horse of the weekend, well, potentially tied in with Goshen, but Champ, who we saw in the game Spirit finish second to So Royale, who Champ is now a 13 to two second favorite for the Gold Cup off the back of finishing second in a top class uh, two mile contest. Barry Geraghty, talk to me about this performance. Personally, I think, uh, connections other than the blunder at the last and not actually winning the race. I'm not sure you could be much more pleased with Champ's uh, sort of reappearance. Yeah, no, I thought it was a great run. Um, I was even at the start watching Nico Leno up handy and I'm thinking, geez, he's going forward with him. This is, this is brave. But he jumped brilliantly. He travelled. He, he seemed to be in great terms to himself. Where last year in the RSA, it was a, la a labour performance at all stages. You know, he was popping fences, he was A to B, there was no bit of zest or, or life to him, and I, I was nursing him through the race. You'd never have thought that day, his next run, he was going to win a two-mile chase on reasonable ground. So it, it it was hard to believe, but he did, a, it was a brilliant run, and it was a brilliant performance. School Royale sets a good level of form on decent ground. He was third in the champion chase to Altior, he was second in the fight and fifth to Epitant, um, and he always had Champ covered for pace. Darrell gave him a brilliant ride down the straight. Um, I thought Champ's mistake at the last was very good. In fact, in that Nico had to commit. He was meeting on a long stride, and if he was going to win, he had to have a go. And he stuck in a stride, but got back up and didn't make a desperate mistake. So I think Champ was, has learned a bit since last year. Um, but I thought it was a brilliant run. If you lined up any of the Gold Cup um, fancies in a two mile chase like that or a Newbury, most of them would be lapped. Alban Ford was the only one I think we could say that might be competitive and we can only say that because we don't know but I don't know any other horse in the Gold Cup picture that would have ran as well over two miles and he proved last year in the RSA how well he stays so for me I think it's it's right where they have him and um, as I say I think he's in seriously good terms with himself yeah, great terms of himself. Bold shout from Connections to run him there. And it looks, I mean, at this stage, like it was a good shout. Uh, just, I want to talk to you about his actual jumping, though. Obviously, his mind was made up for him over two miles. He, you know, he jumped brilliantly, but he was committed to every single fence. And over two miles, you can do that. In a gold cup, he's not going to be wanting to be booted into every single fence. And it's when he's left to make up his own mind, is there a question mark about his jumping at that point? Do you see, do you see the point I'm making there? Is he better when you really commit with him? Um, you could say that, but I don't think so. Um, the horse was well on himself and he jumped really well, long and short. And as I said, I'd forgiven the mistake at the last, but it, it never at any stage in the RSA could I have asked him to go any quicker to jump any braver everything was very much a to b it was a conservative ride because i didn't have the option of sending them at fences and um, there should be enough pace to, that with native river and all that's in the gold cup you're gonna have enough pace that he'll be able to drop in i'd imagine he'll find a nice rhythm Um, but I, I would take far more positives out of it than anything i thought it was it was a really good performance and and stepping up and trip dropping him in a little bit once he relaxes it should be very straightforward for him to you know find a nice rhythm Okay, good to hear. Tony, uh, from your point of view, do you think he deserves to be second favourite for the Cheltenham Gold Cup off the back of this? Um, I think the Gold Cup market was crying out for something to spring into it. Uh, a lot of horses have dirty the bibs and getting in each other's way and uh, there was something primed to, to, to shorten up and he, he just happened to us. I would agree with a lot of what Barry has said there. He just looked on brilliant terms himself. I thought his jumping was excellent but I just don't know what to do with it. Um, a horse prepping over two miles for a Gold Cup. Does this mean now he's going to be lit up in the Gold Cup? I think that's a possibility. Um, he looked really fast. On the, uh, it was such an enjoyable race to watch. He, he looked super fast through the air. He travelled smoothly through it. Um, well being looks on tip top terms himself. But the form... I think to really be positive with the form, you have to think that So Ryle has come back to the... 2019 uh, champion chase form. He hasn't really been running that well this season. He's been running okay, pretty well. I don't know, just quite that level. Um, although it was a little bit of a speed test that they were, they were quickening from, from three out looking at, at the, the finishing speeds and the sectionals and that. So th that's fair enough. Um, so if you're not really rating the form maybe up to his champion chase uh, level, you come back to the RSA former champ and he still has really seven or eight pound to find to me with, with the Gold Cup horses. Um, 
I take Barry's point about he's the only one maybe that, but the, that would be able to cope with the two miles. Well, Plutard did win a, a two-mile grade one not that long ago, but although a bit, probably a bit soft the ground. Uh, I'm a bit biased there in that regard, obviously. But um, I just wonder if that's sometimes an actually a negative um, that he was able to go back in trip. We, we will see. Um, if you if you'd backed them beforehand, if you're running for a go cup, I, I think you're perfectly delighted. I'm just a little bit confused. I'm not sure what what to do with him. I think he shortened in three or four points. Yeah, that's fair enough. That's maybe a little bit to do with the market. So uh, yeah, not really for me, but I'm sure plenty of people were very happy with it. If they were thinking he was up to that level already, yeah, you would be happy. With it. I'm not sure on a line through Alaho Manella Indo that um, he I think he might be a little bit behind some of the others. Barry, last last question from you on this, just before we move on. If, like, imaginary world, I know it's not going to happen, but if he was to run in a champion chase, would you... Do you think he could finish in the places in a champion chase? I'd like to think so, yeah. Um, I don't see... I thought it, I thought it was a great run. Um, I'm getting hard to find a negative in it. I'd agree with Tony says it's not the ideal prep and it could light him up a little bit, but... The Gold Cup has been very competitive the last few years, so there should be enough pace, but you'd love to slot him in halfway, put him asleep. I think he'd find a nice rhythm jumping and you could ride him ride him like a good horse. Um and as I say he proved last year he stays, so no, I I I think he'd be a great ride to run well. Okay. Uh let's well viewers, before we move on, what did you make of Champ's reappearance? Did you think it was a positive in terms of his preparation for Cheltenham? Did you think it was a negative? Get in touch. It's a resounding positive from myself, Barry and Tony, but let us know what you think. Give us your comments. Get in contact with us, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube. You know the drill. Uh, Barry, let's stick with you. And a quick mention for the Denman chase. Bit of a surprise. Secret investor out battling Clan de Zobo. Uh, but for me, the big disappointment was lost in translation. We said on last week's show that we were looking forward to a couple of horses, hopefully making a resurgence. One of those was Goshen, who ticked that box. But lost in translation, Something is amiss with him, and I'm starting to run out of excuses. Hope I don't know. I I'm confused. Dot com. Now, it's too late for him now anyway because you, you can't expect him to come back in three and a half weeks from that. Um, so I think you could draw a line through him, and the same for Clanda Zobo. Um, the winner has to even got an entry at the festival, so I think the race um it fell on its knees a little bit. So I wouldn't be I wouldn't be looking too hard on that one really. Okay, brief, short and sweet on that one. And Barry, sticking with you, uh, one that I do want to get stuck into is Soaring Glory, who won the Betfair Hurdle. Now 12 to 1 with Bet365 for the Supreme. Won it off a pretty low mark in comparison to other horses who've won it and gone on to the Supreme Hurdle at the Cheltenham Festival. But is he Supreme standard? Is 12 to 1 a fair price? Would you be positive or negative on him at this stage? Well, we've been just worried about the novices, how strong they are this season um, and would appreciate it at the head of the market and there's a question mark about whether he has the pace for that and you're looking for horses to beat him and we were putting up Bally Adam here as the obvious danger but he might have the pace on better ground. I think Soren Glory brings a similar threat because he showed great pace to win. He was 1-3-3 three, three because he had a couple of disappointing runs. He, uh, he beat Brave Man's game first time in Chepstow, was impressive for a horse. Who was, he looked very green, he was second to Dusart who was highly thought of but got injured. Um, he'd good bumper form last season, so he could have been just really well handicapped. I'd say if he'd under seven pounds back, he'd have won anyway. Um, so he'd been a 140 or so maybe we'd have more respect from them. But I thought it was a great performance. The, the way he travelled and quickened for me would that's that's the big thing he brings to the table. He also has that handicap experience and he didn't look like a novice among handicappers. He was quick and he was slick and measured and all those things are going to stand to him. I think he'd be a, a brilliant ride in the in the, the Supreme, and he, I think he is a good each way value. And quick line on John Joe O'Neill Senior and Junior here, because uh, I guess it was one of John Joe O'Neill Junior's uh, biggest wins in his career, specifically for his father. But the, the more you try to get out of them, the cooler those guys are. It must just be bred into them. The apple doesn't fall far from the tree. John Joe Senior just year in, year out, give him the ammunition, and he'll hit the board with one or two, won't he, Barry? Oh, he's a brilliant trainer and he's, he's a great character. He's great fun to be around, but that's how he is. He's not, he's not being coy or he's not holding anything back. Um, the instructions he would give you would be minimal. You know, so he doesn't, he doesn't confuse you. He lets you go, lets you do it. Um, and young John just riding up his skin. Brilliant rider. 
um, really strong, really stylish, and he showed there how he can ride a nice, clever race, time his run. So now they're brilliant. It's brilliant to see the two of them doing so well. They're they're top class people. And Tony, soaring glory for you. Would you would you have him in the mix for a supreme at twelve to one? Yeah, um, look, as, as you've chatted about there, the, the ratings would, would say he'd need to improve with the visuals, but really were excellent the way he just powered through the field and then picked it up. The couple of horses down the field at Hart ran a little bit better than the form. I thought Buzz made a very bad mistake, four out, and then got shuffled back. And then he kind of made his move into it quite early. He, he ran pretty well. And the other one that shaped okay um, was Paul Nichols' horse, Time White. Like, looking from two out, you would have said he was going nearly as well as the winner. Um, but he, he stopped a little bit late. He hadn't run, I think, since the previous November. So I, like, I, they were probably aiming, aiming him back at this race because I think his previous run had been at Newbury. I think he, he said they brought down or he felt he was going nicely in the, I think it was the Jerry Field. And, um, but he still might have needed the run. So, so maybe something like the county or or that would suit, would suit him. You, you would think there'd be a bit of improvement in that horse for fitness. Plenty of takeaways from the Betfair hurdle. Uh, Barry, just before we move on from Newbury at all, just a quick line on, I guess, what a tough weekend it was on many levels for various connections of horses. But So Royal obviously winning the uh, game spirit at the weekend was a poignant success given the fact that same connections had lost Lammy Surge. And I just wanted to throw to you about Lammy Surge because he's a horse you've ridden. Yeah, he's a lovely horse, and it was very sad to, to see that happening. Um, I won the Tallworth Hurdle on him back in 2015, so that's a long time ago now, but he's been on the go since, and he's been winning races, he's been to France, he's been everywhere, and he was, no, he was a real solid stalwart, so it was, it was really sad to see that, but it was great consolation for, for Simon and Isaac with Scourayal. Indeed, and I hope they took some solace from that good success. Uh, let's move on to Sunday and head over to Ireland. Uh, lots to dissect from the boy in hurdle, Tony Keenan. I guess all eyes were on, on Tiger Roll, but let's actually focus on the winner. Um, what did you make of the race as a whole, Beacon Edge? I think you've been a fan of for a while. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, you don't, you no, don't sound, no, you don't sound very not, not really, no. <laughs> No, no, I threw to be, to I, you I, wrong I, about I, that. I, I, <laughs> yeah, I, I backed, I backed French Dynamite, and he was a late non-runner, um, and I, I think he would have beaten these anyway. I hope that was me thinking. Anyway, I, I'm interested to see where he goes next. It was a very slowly run race compared to the mayor's race that was before. I think I just get this right. From about five furlongs out, they were um, five seconds quicker than the mayor's race. They went really slow and um, kind of quickened it from the front. A Fury Road was disappointing to me. Um, he got the run of the race. Um, he seemed to get make a little ground on them between the last two. Jumped the last really well and couldn't hold off. Um, Beacon Edge with Beacon Edge would have a little bit more pace, but I, I was disappointed with Fury Road. He still has that high head carriage that he had as a novice. Um, I thought he should have won that Beacon Edge. Yeah, I think this is what he is. I think he's kind of a one fifty horse uh, going to the entry hurdle. Yeah, I, I don't think he's going to mix it in in the great ones. He's a he's had a good season though. Um, two wins out of Merley ran really well in the Hatton's Grace. I think maybe running them in two miles in Nice. He, I think they got fooled in the Hatton's Grace. It was a funny sort of slowly run race where he just got got beaten by two bad the horses. I'd say and they've done the right thing, gone back up three and a half. Yeah, three wins out of him is is pretty good. Um, I suppose Tiger Roll is the other one to talk to. I was really struggling to take positives from his run. In a slowly run race like that, I thought he would have been able to hang in with them. I know he was he travelled well and he, he was he was keen and all that, but he's now kind of had three bad runs. Um, he's just I, I know Keith Dunn who hasn't given anything, given him anything like a hard time, but um, he's been beaten a hell of a long way. <sighs> he's a, he's he's on the go a long time now. He's won two nice. So there's a lot of miles in the clock. I don't know, look, obviously, absolute folk hero, you'd love to see him come back and even run well in a cross country or Grand National or anything like that, but at the moment he'd be on the, I, I, I don't think he'd be anything to be considering backing in, in either of those races. Okay, well he's currently 8-1 to one Tiger Roll for the cross country chase. Uh, Barry, let's go to you vice versa in terms of the way to dissect the boy in hurdle, let's start with Tiger Roll. It's a negative from Tony, what are you saying? Yeah, I'd probably be a bit more on the fence if you like. Um, I thought he ran well to a point. He he showed great enthusiasm, albeit it wasn't a, a race run at any high pace. But he travelled really well. He seemed sweet in himself. I thought he looked very big in himself. So he's he's going to improve a lot. And if you run the horse who's, you know, who wants better ground anyway, 
um, he's fat as a fool and he's running a heavy gun on his first run you're looking for that kind of finish I think um, so it was disappointing how far back he finished but I think he was involved for long enough to say that there's life there you could, you'd struggle to fancy him for the cross country but if he ran well in the cross country then you can make a case for him in the national but I think you'd, 8 to 1 is probably a reflexes chance you'd be backing him in hope for, eight, for a Cheltenham more than anything as regards the first two I like Tony I thought Fury Road I thought it was set up for him to go and win and he disappointed me uh, Beacon Edge is a nice type of horse 150 mark they're both 20 to 1 for the Sayers hurdle I think that's a fair reflection on that chance but they, they wouldn't be for me OK, we'll leave them and a bit of a question mark next to Tiger Oil going forward. For me, I was just pleased with the way he travelled into the race. I thought he looked like some old zest was there. Uh, Barry, let's stick with you because another talking point from Ireland at the weekend was Hugh Morgan's ride, uh, this winning ride without any stirrups. I just wanted to sort of try and get the viewers to appreciate it in terms of from a jockey's point of view. Bearing in mind, if I tried to ride my hunter without any stirrups for about two minutes, it would be agony. Um, so just explain why it was such a phenomenal ride, why he's getting all the plaudits from plenty of horsemen, both sides of the Irish Sea. Well, he, he deserves every single one of them. Um, it was brilliant. Now, I was watching the race and I'm thinking, you, will you just pull this horse up and you're giving him a hard race for nothing? Because the chances of him winning, considering he's going around riding him leg length like John Wayne, you would say he's no chance. Um but he kept jumping, he kept travelling. He was off the bridle turn and then he chased him along and he, and he finished it really well. But to go three miles like that, jumping fences, and never even nearly fell off. You know, his fitness level, his strength level, I think his uh, lack of respect for his wedding tackle, it was... Every, every, everything was out the window. But it was, it was a brilliant, it was a brilliant piece of horsemanship. But he's and he surprised. I think he surprised everyone. I was expecting to see Dennis Hogan running out onto the track with a circuit to go, <laughs> waving him to tell him to pull him up because they don't usually win on the very rare occasion you see someone try and do that. I know whenever it's happened to me, I've pulled him up soon enough after because you think you have no chance. <laughs> You're just stopping, are you, Barry? Giving up altogether at that stage? No, just on a scale of one to ten, how sore is Hugh Morgan waking up on Monday morning? Depends. Depends. Uh, what part of the one and ten he hit? You know, it's it's if he's if he. I can't. I can't. I can't imagine you. Like you're 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 growing on both. The actual you're growing. You're growing, right? Your the muscles, everything in there are going to be so stiff and so sore. But it's if he has a direct impact, as any fellow would tell you, isn't the prettiest thing in the world. So if he if he managed somehow, which I can't imagine he did, to avoid a direct hit, he'd probably be a bit stiff, but okay, but. No, I'd say, I'd say you was a quiet boy for the last few nights. Well, look, he won the race, so happy days. I think, like you say, Barry, everyone expects him to pull up at any stage of the race. Uh, let's move on to the champion a chase preview, because obviously we've been reviewing the championship races at the Cheltenham Festival for the last few weeks, and now we get to move on to the champion chase. Only four weeks to go to the festival, so perfect time to do it. And of course, we've got a red-hot favourite with Shaq and Poussoir, is currently the 6-5 on favourite with Bet365. Next best in the betting is Altior at 8-1. to one. We've got Politolog at 9s, New Bay Neighbor at 10s, uh, First Flow at 14 Show Royale at 25s. Barry, what are you thinking at this stage ahead of the champion chase? Uh, Shaq and Poussoir, we've spoken about post the Dublin Racing Festival. We were all very positive on him, essentially. If he gets there in one piece, is his price right? I think that, that the market is about race. He's, he's a standout horse. He's been very good, rock solid, jumps, brilliant, travels, stays. It's hard to find a chink in his armour, so I think he's a worthy favourite. I think Altior is right to be second favourite. He has that bit of class. Um, you can't rule him out yet. He ran well behind Nuba Negra in Kempton, considering he had a dirty scope afterwards. So, um, albeit surname has really struggled, I think Altior put in a good show, considering he wasn't 100% on himself. But if you go through the race, there's, there isn't great depth in it. Um, Nuba Negra has, was raised, I think, about £12 for that win, but only on the back because he beat him below par, Altior. Um, it's really difficult to find anyone. I thought Celius Emery, who ran well in the champion hurdle last year, only beaten him at nine lengths, he's 50 to one. For me, he was the only <laughs> other horse who has a level of ability to be competitive. Well, not to be competitive, but who, who has a chance maybe of getting involved outside of the obvious. So I thought he was a sneaky one. He didn't get the trip 
over two and a half in Clonmel and heavy ground in November. It's his first run back since then. So you're taking a little bit on trust, but um, there's not a lot of law for that in there that would interest you. But um, Shakan Pursoir, it's hard to oppose, and I think Altior is, is his biggest danger. Okay, Tony, who do you think price is wrong for this champion chase? Who would you be with? For me, Nube Negra, I, I, you know, every, every, Altior's reputation means that he's 8-1. to one. Nube Negra comes in here as a 10-1 to one shout. He stood out for me just as a horse on the up and has been targeted for this race uh, for a very long time. And I thought it was interesting that Harry Skelton was going to, obviously got jocked off Politolog last time out because he couldn't ride him in the champion chase because he was pinning his colours to the Nube Negra mast. Uh, for me, he's a progressive type coming in here. I know he'll need a career best. Where are you looking, or do you want to? I mean, do you want to take on the short price favourite here? No, no, I, I have no interest really in taking on uh, Chak and Bourgeois. I think, think he could be seven, ten pound clear at ease if he's able to reproduce the, the leopard percent form at Cheltenham. And is there a massive reason to think that he won't? He can get, he can run below his best and still win. Um, Altiar. Kind of would come back to that point I'm making about the Ascot race. Don't really want to have much interest in him. I also think his jumping has become a little bit of a negative. There was a time when his big jumping, he had enough pace to get himself out of trouble. Now it just seems to be leaving him behind. He's, he's a, he just has a, has a strange way of jumping. It's, it's not very efficient. It's not a two metres jumping, shall we say. Politologue, I thought he had quite a hard race in Ascot. It wasn't as good as sand his Sandown run. Um, also, was he really a Cheltenham horse? I know he's won it last year, but the race fell apart last year. You know, you know, there's the, he, he has run a couple of good races, good races in it, but he's one of these that needs the others to on the perform. Nuba Negra, yeah, probably not good enough. The, the horse, I suppose, that uh, I'd be somewhat interested maybe without the favourite on the place only markets. I, I know, I, I think you asked me this maybe on the very first episode, Vanessa, had this horse any chance? And I said no. Um, put the kettle on I, I think w would be the one I would come down on without our place only marks I wouldn't really have any interest in backing it each way it'd be, it'd be place only um, a couple of reasons obviously the, the, the supreme effectiveness at the track is a big thing um, it seems to be another one of these Henry de Bromada has had some strange horses over the years that just aren't as good in Ireland but seem to be really suited by racing in the UK especially Tiara was one Jeez, he couldn't win at all in Ireland he came alive when he when he went went across the water. Put the kettle on seems to be a little bit in that mould. Um, displayed I'd say a lot of toughness to win in November and, and had a had a hard race there against Duke de Ginevra, and maybe was still feeling the effects of that at Christmas. But that was still a, still a really good run. Like with Chak and Pursua back that up at Dublin Racing Festival. Notebook I would say also backed it up to a degree. He, he just paid for um putting a lot of pace to, to the race in the middle part of it. I thought she didn't jump quite as well at Leopardstown, but maybe Leopardstown isn't really a track and Cheltenham is a track. The Arkell winners have a really good record of, of backing up and um, running well in the championships, winning it, I, I do think will be beyond her. That Arkell form, it's starting to look a little bit a little bit better. I'm fancying Fakir Uderiz for the Ryanair. Um, Rouge Viff has, has, has you know won a, won a good race. Um, earlier on in the season put up a good performance so I would take her I, I, I didn't really see an awful lot more among the outsiders Green the team was a bit disappointing at the weekend race too free uh, trainer sounds a little bit lukewarm on him taking him for the Ryanair um, I think Silius Emery I, I'd wonder about his well-being uh, he just he hasn't really had an entry in quite a while so but I, I actually I would actually kind of agree with Barry the latent ability is probably if he could get his jumping together and he he is um, a two miler. They're probably aborted the, the chasing pretty early last season when they saw the check and Bourgeois. But yeah, I'd take a chance in the mayor maybe to, to get into the three. But I, I wouldn't want to take on the favourite, no. Okay, put the kettle on currently 14 to 1 with that 365 for the champion chase. Slightly shoehorning this in, but obviously, post the Dublin Racing Festival, Chacan Pulsois' time was compared enough, a lot with Energumine's time. And Barry, just bringing you back in here because I hear. Well, I hear, because I heard it on our own channel, Sky Sports Racing, that you rode in Ergumin in the week, did you? Just give us a little update. This is a horse who you're a bit of a fanboy of, and then you got to ride him. I know, Lucky I boy. know. I, I, I had a real horse crush, so I had a Wednesday morning when I went down to Willie's and they told me I was riding in Ergumin. So, um, oh, he was gorgeous, beautiful, tall, lean. Um, what surprised me most was how relaxed he was, which was really interesting. Right. I don't think, yeah, I don't think it's as much of a, a concern maybe as people might think but I'm sure if he sets him a light out the gate he um and all mankind gets in his tail he'll be keen enough but he's not uh 
he's not a runaway anyway. He's definitely not a tearaway. He didn't try and tear away me. Um, so he was a lovely ride. The other thing I noticed was how innocent he is. He's only had one run over hurdles and a few runs over fences, so he hasn't had a massive amount of experience. But he's going down and he's whinnying and he's looking and he's ducking and bucking and messing. And I think, which is for me, is a real sign of a horse who has improvement in him. He's not fully switched on yet, so you could see improvement in him from from the Dublin Racing Festival to Cheltenham. And I wouldn't be surprised to see further improvement in him. And um, just one other point I'll add to that as well is Nico. I was speaking with Nico during the week and we were discussing a few things and. Uh, he actually highlighted to me that he's sat on the Nurgamine as well. So um, Tom Lacey had him as a point of pointer and Nico schooled him over the fences in seven barrows. So he's a little inside line on him as well. No way. Just one last point on him then. Was he what you expected? Because I know after the Dublin Racing Festival, you were talking about him being all power and so different to Shishkin, which is clearly still the case. But just as a horse to ride, was he what you expected? Um, yeah, big, tall, strong, forward going. But if he had a, said to me, skip down over five fences, I'd say I would have got what I expected. Okay, good to know, good to know. Right, viewers, of course, as always, uh, at the races have a brilliant Cheltenham Festival mega site that you should be clicking on right now, essentially, and you'll get to see loads of good content on there. Of course, we've just talked about the Champion Chase and some of the two milers, but on there is loads of content for all the championship races, uh, lots of different columns and stable tours, one of which is none other than Willie Mullins. So go check it out, Willie Mullins Stable Tour on the At The Races Cheltenham Festival mega site. Head there now. Let's fly through the week ahead. Uh, I personally haven't got a huge amount to say, but obviously Kempton at the weekend. Barry, uh, looking ahead to Kempton, anything that we should be keeping an eye out for, horses you're looking forward to seeing, please? Yeah, the, the Pendle Novus Chase, it looks a competitive race. For me, I thought Hitman, he fell in the Silly Isles. Um, I thought the step up and trip was going to suit him, so I think he should run a big race. At the weekend, with Sir Zobo is in there as well, Gala. It looks a competitive race, but for me, um, Hitman would be the one to be on. Um, Nicky runs a juvenile, Hirsos Desai, um, who won very impressively at Christmas in Kempton. He's in the Adonis, also a tree, tr tree tonic um, of Alan King's. He's in there as well, and he's also in the Dove Cut, so it'll be interesting where he goes. But um, Hiros the Sai would definitely he's one to be of in uh, keep an eye on because Nicky would often use this as a late prep for Cheltenham to try and get in experience. So um I'd say he was keen to get this for out and it'll be it'll be interesting where he goes. Obviously in the Donnelly colour is the same as French Seal. Like it, like it a lot. We'll keep an eye out for him and Hitman in the pendle as well. Uh now let's move on to everyone's favourite time of the week. This is where we get stuck into something we've taken offence to, the offence section, and we hand the microphone over to Tony Keenan. But this week, very similar to last week, Tony is on great form at the moment, not offended with anything. Tony, what topic are we tackling this week? So I think it's another positive, well, not positive, but definitely not. No. You haven't taken offence to anything, should we put it that way? No, absolutely no offence this week, just kind of a talking point, something to watch in the lead up to Cheltenham. I suppose I'm asking the question, like, is Cheltenham, Cheltenham this year? Um, owners uh, can't go, crowds can't go, people can't even go to the pub to watch it. I'm not always suggesting that any of these things should be allowed, by the way, I'm, I'm just stating it as it is. Um, and I've noticed a few of the Irish trainers, maybe more so outside of the big yards, seem a little bit lukewarm on, on travelling some horses to it. Um, Paul Nolan there with latest exhibition was, was one that come to mind. I see um, Reese Williams there on that the races and in his Betfair piece there during the week he was talking about he was fancying hook up for the the, the dawn run and making the case that would the trainers of Rosie's Hollow and um, Royal Cahala really want to go to, to Cheltenham. Now there's there's other reasons. There's, there's a good race at Fairy House there for them and Fairy House is a lot closer to Cheltenham this year. Like Cheltenham is finishing on March 19th and Fairy House is starting on April 3rd. And I think with that proximity, some of those other Irish yards outside of the big yards, you know, might be saying, right, well, Willie Mullins, Gordon Elliott, they're possibly going to be a little bit weakened at Fairy House. And, and the prize money there is, is, is you know, is still been upheld and, you know, it, the value of the race are there. But I suppose the, the thing that I'm most interested in, I was just chatting to someone who, who works in administration in one of these big yards and he was just telling me about the... The difficulties, I suppose, with with the paperwork and around the COVID and Brexit, with getting horses and getting people there, I just I have gonna have to read this stuff because it's lent to me arm and he gave me the dummies version of it as well. So um, 
you know, obviously trainers are having the firm plans up a, li a little bit earlier, I think, because with, with all this hassle, I think we did see that last week with a lot of the entries for the novice race, like Willie Mullins took a hell of a lot of horses out of races last week, which would not be him. Um, like Gordon Elliott, I think, is, is Envoy Allen only in, in the marsh. Maybe that's very obvious, but you know, I think they would always have left the bases covered in times past. But just with the horses, like they've got all sorts of confusing VAT implications. I think you have to do customs paperwork for every horse, where it used to be per horse box. The Department of Agriculture need to be involved through health, health certs. Um, horse boxes now need to be registered in the UK, um, and everyone on the truck is going to need a competency cert for transporting animals, even if, if they're just travelling. I think that's a Brexit thing. And as regards the people, he was saying like, that every jockey, trainer, walk rider, member of staff, when they enter the track, they're not now going to be allowed to leave it till the meeting's over. There's a big operation there going on with on site accommodation, how they're going to manage that. You have all the usual COVID testing in the weeks leading up to it. Um, obviously, the jockeys will have that grade one top level sport exemption, but all the other people coming back are, are going to need to isolate to, to some degree. Um, and I think a lot of the bigger Irish yards are going to be using some UK staff to kind of complement their own. And I suppose with those bigger yards, yeah, they'll get over that running an extra horse or two, um, you know, th th they'll manage that. But for the smaller yards, you're just wondering, is it going to be is it going to be worth the hassle when there's a good meeting there in two and a half weeks afterwards? I don't know the answer to this. I just think it's going to be something to monitor um, in the next... And is there going to be a, a smaller but but extremely um, select team of Irish horses going over? So we'll, we'll see, but it's just it's just something to monitor. I wasn't aware of how, how much difficulty there was with this, but uh, there seems to be a, a lot of... Um, organization on it and it's not just a simple thing of switching a horse maybe from a race on a that wasn't a Tuesday to maybe running one on the Friday I, I just don't think it's going to work like that this year oh it's kind of sad to hear in a way because it sounds like it's a bit of a nightmare basically but I wasn't aware of that either Tony it's very interesting uh Cheltenham but potentially not quite the full 100% Cheltenham anyway. Uh, let's round off with tracker time as we always do. For me, I'd like you to all keep might eye in the tracker, please, going forward. I know we sent our favourite for the listed bumper at the weekend for Harry Fry and he travelled much like the winner for much of the race. We did far too much, far too early. Harry hasn't had a winner in just a couple of weeks. Wondered if there was a few runners just not quite finishing their races. Um, I just think he's still a horse to keep on side. Don't lose faith in him yet. I know he's beaten favourite, but just pop him in the tracker and keep him there. Might I for me. Uh, Barry, let's go to you. Track a horse, please. I thought Cham Chant uh, Champagne Platinum ran really well in the pretense qualifier in Haydock on Saturday. He uh, seemed to get outpaced early in the straight, but finished off well. Um, and I think Cheltenham will bring out the best for him, so he could be one with a, a squeak in the in the Pretemps final at the festival. Pretemps horse, Champagne Platinum, in the track it he goes. And Tony, one for you please, track a horse. Yeah, I'm going to go with a horse that actually won Atlantic Ferry, uh, won the, this new race that was in Navin, the Apples Jade, uh, Mare's Novice. Um, Time of the race would have been by far the best of the two and a half, two mile five hurdle races on the car. Admittedly, that compares to the vine that was really slowly run, but she actually did do it the hard way up front. Uh, the other, well, there was quite a, a bit of a, a battle there for, for the lead. A lot of them wanted to be up there. She raced keenly. I think that's her a little bit, but um, she didn't jump well. Uh, I'd be inclined to actually forgive her. Actually, she actually jumped really well at Limerick the time before that. Henry de Brombit seems to the knack with these mares. And the other thing I thought she had a really good attitude. Um, there were a few, I'd say, ridden more advantageously in the race and they were coming from behind at her in the straight, but she just toughed her, never looked at getting beaten. Um, there's a couple of potentially suitable races for her. She can go back to Limerick. Um, it's either, I think it might be just the day or two before Cheltenham starts, there's a race there for her, but I'd say they might actually go for that grade one at Ferry House at Easter. She might need a little bit of soft ground, but the way things are at the minute, that, that looks very possible, if not likely. Atlantic Ferry it is, and viewers, you know the drill. I mean, if I flag up a track of horse, pop it in just because I tell you to. And if Barry does, yeah, because it's Barry Garrity. But if Tony does, then really put it in the tracker because you know they'll come good eventually. Uh, that is it from us this week with Off The Fence. Thank you very much for watching. As always, please give us a like, give us a retweet, get involved, comments, and hit subscribe on YouTube if you're watching on there. Comments on YouTube, Facebook, wherever you like. We read them all. Please. Join us next week for Off The Fence, brought to you in association with Bet365.